All right, so this week we are moving on to chapter 26, which is about fluid balance and electro electrolyte balance. Um, we're also wrapping up the chapter on urinary. And that's because these overlap quite a bit. So the urinary system, not surprisingly, plays a big role in fluid balance and electrolyte balance. So we're gonna do these together. Um, so first I want to remind you of the fluid compartments in the body. This is what we need to regulate um, in terms of when we're regulating fluid. Very important thing to regulate, especially the intracellular, which makes up about 40% of our body weight is inside our cells. Um, that's crazy. So this is all inside our cells. This is interstitial fluid. And then the plasma is only 20% of the ECF, which is 20% of our body weight. Um, so plasma is what the component of blood that when we think about regulating blood pressure, this is what we're regulating. It is so important to regulate this because it um, indirectly affects intracellular fluid through osmotic gradients. So if we have plasma go low volume, it's going to be higher osmolarity. We're gonna be pulling fluid from the intracellular fluid because of osmotic gradients. We don't wanna do that. Um, we wanna protect against that. We wanna keep our cells round and happy um, and isoosmotic. So in addition to fluid, we also have to think about electrolytes. So having enough stuff inside compared to outside so that osmolarity is equal. Um, osmolarity is all the solutes and it's made up of many different components. So in chapter 26, there's also the discussion of the regulation of specific components because we care about osmolarity. We're gonna talk about regulating osmolarity as a whole. We also care about regulating, regulating specific electrolytes. And you already know about electro, ignore that, um, the function of some of these. So we know sodium. Um, it is really important for action potentials and um, cardiac muscle and muscle firing. So it is high on the outside of cells and low on the inside. That gradient is so important. Um, there is this drive. We have things like action potentials and co-transport that are driven by this gradient. Um, bicarbonate, this is a buffer. So you can see it's actually um, not that much greater on the outside of the cells than inside, but a little bit. We need to have it around. It buffers acids, very important. Potassium is important and it is high inside the cells. So this is a little bit counterintuitive because we think about with the urinary system, secreting potassium is one of the main jobs of the urinary. And the reason for that is we need to be able to regulate extracellular potassium very well uh, because it's low. We want, we want potassium to be able to go inside the cells. It's in there, but what is outside, what is, what's in this extracellular components, we need to be able to regulate and be able to secrete when there's extra. High potassium can cause real bad things with the heart um, and, and low potassium as well. So either one um, can be very dangerous. Um, hyperkalemia is make cells more excitable, but then eventually unable to repolarize. Uh, it's a bad thing for your heart um, and nerve and any muscle tissue. So we need to have that regulated as well. Um, calcium is another one we talked about before, more in the fall. So vesicle release, muscle contraction um, are, are two examples of things that rely on calcium levels being correct. They're a lot lower than the other ones, but we still got to regulate them. These are all regulated variables. Each specific electrolyte is a regulated variable. So is osmolarity. And so is fluid volume itself. So that's the topic of this week. Um, you also kind of want to re remember again, this overlap with urinary because the urinary system is one 
big component for getting rid of fluids or not, right? So for input of fluids, we've got drinking, um, we've got eating, and then some metabolism. For excreting fluids, we've got urine. That's a big one. It's like 60% of fluid output is our urinary system. Besides that, we've got sweat loss. We've got some respiratory um, loss, some feces. Um, but the thing we can regulate that is just for regulation of fluids, like sweat, we want to be able to regulate that. When we want to regulate temperature. The goal of sweating is regulating temperature, which is another regulated variable. The goal of regulating urinary output is to regulate fluid volume and sometimes osmolarity or electrolytes. So it's really gonna be important for, for this. Um, acid base is another really important part of this chapter that we will touch on, but won't do justice in terms of regulating the pH of the blood. Urinary and respiratory are huge for that. Um, so the last thing I wanna do for this intro video is an overview of the hormones that we're going to be talking about. Some of these we've talked about already because um, we're talking about regulation of systems. We're obviously going to talk about hormones. So hormones produced by the kidney. What are some hormones produced by the kidney? See if you can name any. Well, we've got renin. You know that, right? Produced by the granular cells. We've talked about this already. This is going to stimulate aldosterone, um, via angiotensin, our RAS system, tensin. So renin is produced in the kidneys. We've got urethropoietin. You know this, right? What is this stimulated due to? Low oxygen. And EPO is a hormone it's going to do what? It's going to stimulate red blood cell production. Does that make sense? Yeah, we want to be able to carry more oxygen. Red blood cells are what carry oxygen in our, in our blood. If we're detecting low oxygen, low partial pressure of oxygen, it probably means we don't have enough oxygen and we probably need some more red blood cells to be carrying oxygen. Let's make some, um, yeah, let's do that. This is actually a way of regulating blood volume as well, because um, that those blood cells are part of, of the volume, but specifically tar um, responding to low oxygen. How about calcitrol? Regulating um, calcium levels. We haven't talked a lot about that. It opposed to parathyroid hormone, it is going to um, be released in response to high calcium. So it is one I won't talk about more than that, um, but calcium regulation, it kind of emphasizes the importance of the kidney in, in that. So we've talked about renin, we've talked about EPO before, um, and here, I don't think I, I, know if I told you before, it's produced by the kidney, it is. And now you know a little more about it. Then we have hormones that affect the kidney, so act on the kidney. Well, actually, look right there, aldosterone. So renin stimulates aldosterone, which is going to um, stimulate potassium secretion and sodium reabsorption in the district, distal convoluted tubule. We saw that last week. We saw it with blood pressure. We're going to look at it a little bit more this week. Um, so we've kind of done it. We'll do it again. Then we've got parathyroid hormone. Talked about this last week as well. And also the distal convoluted tubule in terms of calcium reabsorption when calcium levels are low, acts on the kidney to help us reabsorb calcium. Important thing to be able to regulate. We've done that. Um, Antidiuretic hormone, ADH or vasopressin. We've talked about this. We will again. Um, so this acts on the collecting duct to insert aquaporins or water reabsorption, and then therefore urine 
um, regulation of urine output. It's going to decrease urine output to have more ADH. In some cases, we might want to produce less ADH. So we'll see this in um, context again. Uh, last one is Nat, let me spell this right. Natriuretic peptides. So we've actually learned one already. Atrial natriuretic peptide, remember that? A peptide produced in the atria of the heart in response to high blood pressure that is going to act on the kidney to reduce GFR and therefore, I'm sorry, increase GFR so we can have more urine output in response to that high blood pressure. Makes sense, we wanna have that, right? So we've talked about all of these, um, some already. Ones we're gonna see um, the biggest this week are going to be, surprise, surprise, ones you've seen before, because this is blood pressure regulation, right? Um, and a little bit of this, because again, that's blood pressure regulation. Like that's what regulates fluid volume, blood pressure, fluid volume. Um, we are going to see this a little bit. We're going to do some integrative um, at the end of this week, looking at some integrative learning outcomes that relate to calcium regulation, potassium regulation overall. So first half of this week, rest of these videos is going to be um, a little bit more aldosterone, ADH, AMP, and then it's a big picture, blood pressure osmolarity regulation. Um, then the second half is going to be a little bit about some specific electrolytes. A whole lot more you could look into there with regulation of like every single thing you might care to talk about, right? Potassium, calcium, um, pH is a big one. We won't have quite enough time for to talk about how our bodies regulate that specific ion, right? Which is um, an overlapping but different system than regulating osmolarity as a whole, which incorporates all stuff um, or regulating fluid volume, which is also related to osmolarity because fluid follows those solutes. All right, so it's gonna get complicated. It's gonna get fun. Um, yeah. <laughs>